During this project, we're going to design our own character, auto-rig it, and then download it and select a pose to print from. I hope you enjoy it. So we're going to do a quick character design overview. We're going to use an application, an Adobe application called Fuse, to design a character quickly and export that character to a browser-based application called Mixamo, where it will be auto-rigged. Once it's auto-rigged, we're going to select an animation and then go ahead and download that into an application called Cinema 4D. From there, we can design scenes with it, export the model or parts of the scene with the model to be 3D printed, and there's a, a lot of possibilities with this. So let's go ahead and get into Fuse. So when you open Fuse up, uh, you'll see um, the different body parts that we're going to start with over here on the right hand side, the head, the torso, legs, so on and so forth. Um, Fuse allows you to do a lot of detail and adjustment. So we assemble first. Once we start assembling the, the Fuse character and, and we've got the whole body put together, we can customize the body um, in a lot of different ways. I'll walk you through that. We can add clothing to it and then we can adjust what the clothing looks like uh, by clicking this, this texture tag up here. On the left hand side are um, a few buttons that allow you to pan and zoom the camera in the viewport. Um, this allows you to rotate and orbit and this will center things up in case you get out of place while you're designing this. Right here is your selection tool so you're going to select or click on different parts of the model to adjust those and then this little feature here allows you to actually adjust the mesh or the different parts of the body that you do click on. Up top um, this is where you begin your new model for a, a new design. You can go into the Creative Cloud library and open a model up or one from your computer. You can save the, the model in a couple different ways. This is uh, undo and redo and then these allow you to render different parts of the model itself. So let's go ahead and get started with just a very uh, simple overview of how to use this. I'm going to click this Mail Fit A. There are quite a few templates here um, that we can use. Once you select uh, a body part, the next body part pops up, by the way. So as soon as I selected this Mail Fit A, the torso is uh, popped up. So the selection tool is right here, and as I hover over top of different parts of the face, I can select different parts of that face or different parts of that mesh, and I can adjust those. So I can go into my Modify Geometry, and with those areas selected, I can go and I can modify that any way, shape, or form that I want. So obviously I'm adjusting the mesh, um, and it's going to make some pretty large adjustments. I can also do that. Um, with sliders and I'll show you that here in just a second. So I'm just going to go ahead and reset that and click out of it. So now I'll select a torso and it loads pretty quickly and I'm going to go ahead and select a leg. I'll try to stay consistent with this model but you can mix it up any way you want. And let's go with uh, male fit A's arms. And now I've got um, the entire body put together. So I can um, move it around. I'll select orbit here. I can grab it and move it any way I want to check it out and, and see how it's going to look. And it's got a little bit of a lag in it right now. There we go. So I can drag it around, take a look at it, and if I'm good with it, I can go right into uh, customizing and clothing. And let me talk a little bit about customizing. So when I click on customize, um, this allows me to adjust the body parts independently. So as I drag this little slider back and forth, you can see that this makes the, uh, the bicep smaller or larger. The length of the arms can change. And if these sliders are not working, go up to Fuse and click Preferences and make sure that the maximum adjustment says 100. If it says 0, type in 100 and hit OK. That's pretty common for 
uh, these sliders to not be working. But you can make adjustments to any body part that you click on. And I can go into the, the face and I can either adjust it to make, let's make him look angry or I can randomize it so it will make some uh, some weird goofy looks to it or I can reset it and all of the body parts have those capabilities that randomize and if I don't like things I can go back to reset or I can go to randomize and just kind of tweak some things um, and and work down through the body that way so let's say that I like the models shape how it is I'm gonna go into clothing when I click clothing we start with the tops and I'm just gonna get some uh, some clothes on this guy and they have quite a few selections for you in here for for all the clothing it's a pretty pretty good library get some dress pants for him I'm just gonna scroll down and grab some shoes real quick let's go with these Oxfords um, give him some hair faux hawk that looks fantastic I'm gonna skip the hats um, eyewear so when we export this model into Mixamo, one of the glitches that I've seen with these models is a lot of times the eyes are inverted. So to remedy that, I always just throw some glasses on my model, um, which isn't extremely handy, but it does help remedy that, that issue that we can have. Um, Got to throw a beard on him. So throw a beard on him. And there's gloves and masks, and you can throw a mustache on him, so on and so forth. So let's say that I'm, I'm happy with this model. Oh, let's talk about texture really quick. So for all of the different um, things that uh, the different um, clothing entities, we can adjust those as well, and we can go in and select um, some some different um, materials for those as well. And then there's all kinds of adjustments down here, and you can go through those again if you have a concept, an idea up front on what you want to do. That I think that's always best, especially if you've used Mixamo and, and Fuse before. Um, if you haven't, sometimes it's, it's best just to go in and kind of kind of play around. Okay, so let's go ahead and, and talk about what we're going to do with this guy. Let's say that I'm, I'm happy with him and I'm ready to uh, to send him to get rigged. So I can either save this to the Creative Cloud libraries right off the bat and build other characters and pull those down later to be used, or I can send it to be rigged right away. So I'm going to click Send to Mixamo. I'll give it a name. and hit save and that's going to save it'll just take a, a couple of seconds and it's uploading right now so it took a couple of minutes for Mixamo to rig that and I skipped ahead for you um, after sending it directly to Mixamo it again auto rigged and you can see the the character now it's rigged and it looks like the uh, the motions pretty good it got the fingers it looks like they're rigged um, since I have glasses on it I can't see if the eyeballs are inverted but it looks like the model worked out pretty well so I'm gonna click finish use this character and at this point I can either download it right now or I can animate it and in my case I want to go ahead and animate it and I'm going to use uh, Mixamo's animations to uh, their FBX files so that I can download that into um, Cinema 4D and I can choose the pose that I want to use to export it to 3D print it and I can use that animation for my scenes. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, just click animations and when I scroll down through these animations there are a ton of them and there are animation packages as well so there's a lot in here um, notice there there are several pages of these animations so if there's something specific you would like you can search for it up in the search bar or if there's something you've used before and you want to find you can do that or you can just kind of browse through them um, let's say that I want to 3d print this guy and I don't want there to be too much action but let's do something here. Let's do, um, I'm going to do this jumping down. So I'm going to click that. That way I can have the character interact with something it's jumping off of. Um, notice that 
it looks like we have 80 frames and I can extend that a little bit but you are kind of locked into the amount of frames that the FBX file gives you so that's only 55 frames if you want it to be a longer animation you might want to um, select one that obviously is a little bit longer and we can adjust that and you can actually trim frames as well you can click mirror and it'll do a, a mirrored version of it the exact opposite action um, we can adjust in this case the arm space and some of the different parameters of how those FBX files are acting with the character um, for demonstration purposes let's go ahead and I'm just going to go ahead and download this now so I'm going to click download make sure that you have FBX selected with the skin um, we'll stick with 30 frames per second that's what I'm going to work with in, in Cinema 4D and for keyframe reduction none so I'll click download and let me just minimize this So here's my FBX file. I'll just drag that to the desktop. When you import your FBX files into Cinema 4D, go ahead and leave the import settings as they are. Click OK. And your character will populate in the viewport. Now, I'd like to go ahead and export this model for 3D print, and then we'll run through a, a simple scene design after that. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit play and see what the action looks like. And it looks like the rig's working out pretty well. It's taking on the same action that it, that it had in Mixamo. So I'm just going to go ahead and minimize this. Um, for the 3D print, this is a pretty dynamic pose here. But I'm going to go ahead and scrub back and forth a little bit just to make sure that's what I want. That looks pretty cool. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and export this model just like this in this pose. To do that, I'm going to select... Um, all of the different parts of the model that are rigged by clicking on um, this top object, holding shift on my keyboard, clicking on the bottom one so that they're all selected. I'm going to right click and then go down to connect objects and delete. And when I did that, it turned all those objects into just one object. But notice one of the, the troubleshooting issues that I'm going to have is um, there's some, some different parts um, that Cinema 4D is, I guess, connecting to this uh, this rig. So I'm going to delete the rig and go in and delete uh, the rest of that model that I don't want to export. So I'm going to click on my FBX files, hit delete on the keyboard, get rid of that. And now I'm going to go back here and troubleshoot a little bit. And this has happened a couple of times, and I'm, I'm kind of glad this actually happened because I can run you through it. So I'm just going to navigate to a, a, a point where I can see all of the stuff that I want to delete. This has nothing to do with my model. Um, that's some artifacts, I think, that were attached to the rig in, in a TPO. So I'll get rid of that, I'll export my model, and then we'll go back and create a scene. So I'm going to go right down here into poly mode, and I'm going to click where it says polygons. And now I can see all the polys that are making up this mesh. And I'm just going to select the polys that I don't want and delete them. So I'll go up here to my live selection tool, and I'm going to use actually the, the lasso selection. So I'm just going to drag around these polys that I don't want to select them, hit delete on my keyboard, and I can just get rid of those. So I've deleted all of those that I don't need, and now I've got my model in the pose that I want and all of the different parts um, that, I, that I want it to take on. So I'm going to go back here and hit model mode. And I'm going to go ahead and delete these tags just so you guys can see what this model is going to look like. So I'll hold shift on my keyboard, select all the tags, and hit delete as well. Um, if we do want to bump the resolution up uh, on our model, we can go into sculpt and we can hit subdivide and that can kind of clean things up. You just got to watch how high you go with your poly count because you'll start to distort your model. Um, and uh, if you get too many polys, it's really going to slow things down too. So I'm just going to take this um, this object and I'm going to export that and it will be ready to 3D print. So I'll go to File, Export, and we're going to select STL. 
and I'll give it a name to print. Click save, and I like to work in millimeters so that when it's dropped on the uh, the printer bed and my slicer, um, it's not too large of a file. So I'll click OK, and that will show up on the desktop. It's over here. So I'll right click that, open with preview just to check to see how it looks. That looks pretty sweet. I'm going to go ahead and drop that into the slicer and we'll print that. It looked like I had a little issue on the thumb, but I can take care of that later. Um, I can drag that directly into my slicer. I'm using Simplify 3D. And let me get rid of this previous model. And even with millimeters, that ended up being a really big file. So I'm going to shrink that down so I can go to edit, scale to maximum size. And I've run through this in uh, other tutorials, how to slice uh, these, these characters. But this one, in this case, I found that if I have so, like the arms outstretched or I have a lot of things hanging off the model up high, we have to print a whole lot of supports and things can go wrong with that. So what I'd like to do is just basically flip this thing upside down. So I'm going to go negative 90 degrees, type that in, hit enter. And let's go negative 180 not 90 hit enter and then drop the model to the bed and let me just arrange it get a little bit closer to the uh, the center actually I'll just hit center and arrange um, and this should be a, a better print now I have some supports down along the the bottom of my model and there'll be some supports uh, back here for the legs but I don't have to worry about a ton of supports underneath the arms and this should work out pretty well let me just uh, rotate it a touch so that's a little bit more even And that should be a good print. I'll hit prepare to print. And I already have my uh, my process set. Click OK. And 11 hours. So we'll get a time lapse of this being printed. And we can take a look at it. It looks like the support should work out just fine. So I'm going to save the, uh, the tool pass to my desktop. And I'll get that printed. Now let's go back to um, the scene in, in Cinema 4D. So I'm just going to undo all of the uh, the actions that I took to uh, to delete this and go back to the original state of the model. So I'll hit play again, make sure everything's good to go. Now let's just build a really quick, simple scene so that we can render out an animation and, and walk through that. So we'll have a couple of projects out of the, the work that we've done. So just to set up the simplest of scenes, I'm going to create a floor. And I'll put some material on that floor here in a second. He needs something to jump off of, so I'll go up to these primitives. And let's have him just kind of jump off of a cube. And I could export this cube as well and, and 3D print that, um, and that would be fine. But just for the, the sake of getting a simple scene set up, I'll put that in so I can interact with it. And let's go with a, a physical sky here. Um, I did do a tutorial on uh, simple scene design. I'm using basically the same elements. But let's take a look and see how this is, this is looking. So it looks like he's embedded into the cube when he's standing up top and getting ready to jump. But when he jumps, he looks like he's, uh, he's landing on the floor pretty well. So I don't have to adjust the uh, the floor or move him up or down. But let's just uh, let's adjust let's adjust this cube in space. So highlight the cube. I'm going to go ahead and move it down so that it's just touching um, my figure. And let's go ahead and make him jump off the cube. That looks pretty cool. So I really don't have to move things around too much. Let me get a little bit better view of the scene though. Um, that's an underneath view, obviously, but I'm just going to use my navigation tools to get a little bit more dynamic view of this. So let's go back and hit play. He's up high, jumping down low. I'm just going to zoom in a little bit. Nice. And I'll really quickly put some uh, material on the ground. Let's uh, go into the content browser. I'll go into my presets and my visualize and grab some different materials um, to use. So let's go with 
Actually, I can. Let's use some stone. And make the uh, the ground granite. And for this block, let's do a. Let's do a metal block. Um. It should have some good reflections on it. So I'll drag that to my block. And I have this guy jumping down off of a block. And again, I could uh, export that, that cube and 3D print it. Um, if you do want to export anything for your, uh, your character to interact with, the best way to do that is to go into Objects and select whatever it is you want to export. So if I want to export this cube to print it, um, I'm going to go up to Edit, Copy, and I'm going to go to a new project, File New. And I'll right click, or actually I'll go to Edit and paste it in. Now I can export this thing. So I go to File, Export, STL, and I'll title it Cube. And hit Save on the desktop, make sure it's millimeters. And I can drop that into the slicer with my uh, figure, or I can print it later. Now. Every time that you do that, just know that up underneath the uh, the window dropdown, all the projects that you have open or that you have working are listed here. So I'm going to go back to my original project, that jumping down. And if I don't want to go back to that other window, I can always just go up to Window and, and click the untitled version. Okay, so let's take a look at a quick render. We'll hit Render View and see what this is looking like. So I've got a bunch of reflections on the block, and I've got my dude jumping down. And uh, again, the sky's the, the limit with what you do with these. We can bring in other figures as well. Um, so let's say that I want two guys jumping off of this block, and I'm just going to extend this project a little bit. Let's talk about that really quick. So I can take my rig, hold shift on my keyboard, select everything, and I can go edit, copy, edit paste and it's going to paste a whole nother guy in here now the issue that we're gonna have if we try to move this guy and hit play is he's gonna go right back to that original spot where my other dude is so in order to remedy that we're gonna have to put all of these assets in a null so we'll go up here to the primitives and we'll select a null and I'm gonna grab that whole rig and all of the parts of the character hold shift, click on the bottom, and I'm going to make that a child of this null. And now when I select the null, I can actually go in and I can move that thing around in space or I can rotate it and then move it in space. Maybe we can get these guys jumping off the block together. So let's take a look and see how that's looking. So I'd want to start him in a little bit different spot. So let's move him up just a touch so that they're not overlapping. And I'll hit play. And now I have two of them. And we could adjust um, anything we want with, with this rig and, and slow some things down. But just so you're aware of, of that feature, it's, it's kind of a, a cool way to work. Now let's talk really quick about rendering before I get too uh, um, too in-depth with, with building things in a picture plane because this render could take forever. Underneath render settings, as I mentioned in the scene design for output, instead of current frame, this is going to um, be all frames since it's an animation. Instead of a TIFF, we're going to save it as either a MOV or MP4. I'll go MOV. And I'm going to put a couple of effects in here. Ambient occlusion and global illumination. I'm just going to go ahead and render this out and um, I'll show you what the render looks like here um, after a time lapse. So it's rendering in the, the viewport and it looks like this render is going to take a while. I'm going to let that go and come right back as soon as it's rendered. Alright, so the render is complete and all we have to do is save it out. So we'll go to File, Save As. Make sure you switch from still image to animation. We'll leave it at MOV. Click OK. And save it to the desktop. So the animation will pop up on the desktop. And then we can go into uh, a little post-production if we want to add some sound to it or any other special effects and other applications.